It's got to happen. Something good is in store. We're together again. Just praising the Lord. We're together again. Just praising the Lord. We're together again. Oh, thank you, Lord. It was a call. Oh, something good is going to happen. Oh, something good is in store. We're together again. Just praising the Lord. We're together again. together again Dread what a cause Something good is going to happen Oh, something good is in store We're together again Thank you, Lord Just praising the Lord We're together again Just praising the Lord
Lord. We're together again, just praising the Lord. We're together again in one accord. together again, just, just praising the Lord, we're together again, just praising the Lord, we're together again, in one accord, oh, hallelujah. something good is going to happen, oh, something good.
door, we're together again. Just praising the Lord, we're together again. Just praising the Lord, we're together again. And one accord, something good. Something good is in store, we're together again, just praising the Lord, we're together again, just praising the Lord, we're together again, and one accord, something good. Going to happen, something good is in store. We're together again, just praising the Lord. We're together again, just praising the Lord. We're together again, and one accord. Something good is in store, we're together again, just praising the Lord, we're together again, just praising the Lord, we're together again, and one accord, something good. Something good is in store, we're together again, just praising the Lord. song is accurate I believe something good has already happened I believe God is pleased with a gathering of his people gathering of his saints coming together I know I'm happy I know I'm happy to be here I know I'm happy to see all of y'all coming together to be here with us tonight to eat the lamb what we're here for tonight to spread this table to spread this table before him and eat the lamb and so my goodness y'all look good y'all do look so good tonight all of y'all look good back here we uh if you can't tell we've been a little bit busy around here uh it's been pretty intense for the last few months uh, if if y'all need any assistance with the interpretation back here in the corner they we have a little different system that we are using so it's over your phone if you need any assistance downloading that app you'd see the, the interpreters booth brother memo cano back there 
he'll help you with that. We want to make sure everybody gets to participate in the service. Everybody knows we, we have a lot of Spanish-speaking folks, and so we want to make sure we have that available. We're just glad you're here. Uh, my goodness, we're glad you're here. I just can't tell you uh, how excited we are, how excited we are that you would come, that you would travel the distance to come and be with us here in the oldest town in Texas. Someone asked, is there any old things here in this town? I said, some of the oldest dirt in the state is right here. And uh, come on up, Brother Smith. Green. Glad y'all with us. Praise God. Bless the Lord. <clears throat> Glad y'all could be here. God bless you. God bless you. just want to open the service and, and, and get out of the way. We, I just can't tell you how honored we are to have all of you ministers here with us tonight, all of you coming to be here with us, all of you saints coming to be here with us tonight. I just can't tell you how excited and honored we are and uh, a little bit nervous of Brother Moore described it. He said, I could probably thread the, the needle on a sewing machine with it running. And so that's kind of how nervous I've been getting ready. Uh, you think you're ready and then you find two or three things that you're not complete with. And, and uh, But here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Brother Brown, I hope this is a little better setting than it was when you first made that statement. But here we are, Lord praising your name here we are lifting up your name and and it, when jesus uh john was preaching there and john jesus was coming down the road and 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 he said behold the lamb of god and, and there was some men that said started following started walking after him and and jesus asked them after they'd followed him a little bit Jesus asked him, said, what seek you? Or we'd ask him, what are you looking for? What do you want? Their reply, their reply was, wherein thou dwellest. That was their reply. They want to know, where do you live? Where do you live? And here was Jesus' reply, and this is what I want to encourage all of you tonight. This is what I want to encourage all of you tonight. If you ask that question, Jesus, where do you live? Where can I find you? Where can I find you? Jesus turned and saw them following and said unto them, What seek ye? What seek you? There's a scripture in Timothy that says, Thou hast known my doctrine, my manner of life, and my purpose. Thou hast fully known my doctrine. That's important. That's important. What you listen, what you know, and what you believe is important. But your manner of life, your manner of life. I want to go back to Jesus' reply. When he when when they asked him, Where do you live? And this was his reply to them. Real simple. He said, come and see. Come and see. That's my invitation to you tonight. My invitation is for you to come and see. Come and see. Come see where he lives. Come see where he dwells. Come, come know your doctrine. Your doctrine's important. Your manner of life is important. How you live, how you live, what you know, it won't do you any good to know. the. the you can know the whole book. You can know it all. But your manner of life is how you live. But this is the one I want to get to. This is the part of his, that scripture that Paul gave there in Timothy. Is, is my fully has known my doctrine, my manner of life, and my purpose. 
my purpose. Why? Why am I here? Why did you spend your money? Why did you get on an airplane and fly? Brother driver, why did you load up? Why did you load up and, and drive those miles? Why did you load up and drive your miles? Thou hast fully known my doctrine, my manner of life, and my purpose. There's a purpose in this gathering. Listen, I, I am so glad to see you. I am so glad to see you. You just can't tell. You just don't know how good you look. But there, there is much deeper meaning than for us to get together and pat each other on the back and say, I'm glad to see you. But there is something greater. There's something greater tonight. And, and I hope we can all dig in. I hope we can all dig into that and push past, push past some things that we're struggling with. Push past some things that are separating us. Push past some things and, and focus on our purpose. You know what our purpose is? You know what the purpose of mankind is? It's to lift up our creator. You want to know what you're supposed to be doing? You're supposed to lift up your creator. You're supposed to make him look good. However you can do that, your job is to edify the Lord Jesus Christ and his body. If I want to sum it up tonight, that's your job. All of you have that job. So your purpose tonight, your purpose tonight is to dig down deep. Ask God, what can I do? What can I do? Don't tell, don't tell me you can't do anything. Don't tell me you can't do anything. Some folks say, all I can do is pray. Well, let me, that's the most important thing you can do. That's the most important thing you can do. I, I, don't, I don't need you to tote two before I don't need you to paint. We got folks that can do that, but I need somebody that'll touch God. I need some folks that'll touch God tonight. I need, I need the Lord. I need direction. I need help. Do you need help? Do you need help tonight? I need help tonight. I need, I need help in some areas of my life. I want to get closer to him. I want to put some things behind me, Brother Newman. I want to put some things behind me. Glad you're here with us. Glad you're here. God has a purpose for you tonight. You didn't accidentally show up in Nacogdoches, Texas. Let me tell you, you didn't stumble in here. You didn't stumble in the Nacogdoches, Texas. You had to come here on purpose. Well, I'm here on business. I'm here on business. I like to finish stuff. I don't get paid until I finish. I don't get any money until I finish. I'm looking to finish. I'm looking to complete. Jesus said he finished the work that his father sent him to do. He had a job. You have a job. Your job is to overcome. But let me tell you what another greater job you have. Your job is to make sure I overcome. If it's all about you, but it ain't all about you. It ain't all about me. I'm to seek my brother's wealth. I'm to seek my brother's wealth, Brother Atkins. I'm to, I'm to make sure that you go. I'm the, I come from a large family. And amazingly, I, when my mother cooked a meal, there was eight of us, four on each side. My daddy had a four by eight sheet of plywood for a table. Four kids on this side, four kids on that side, him and her. And amazingly, after she cooked a meal, she wasn't hungry. She was never hungry till we all got through eating. Isn't that amazing? She wasn't have, didn't have an appetite till she made sure all of us had eaten. After we'd eaten, she'd eat what was left. She made sure, she made sure that we were fed. And if we'll make sure that our brother and sister is taken care of, we push them up ahead of us. We put our, put our differences aside, put our problems aside, and make sure, I want to make sure that you go, Brother Bragg. I'm not going to let you fall down. You, you, you're going to have to go. I'm either going to tote you or drag you. You have a purpose tonight. Sure, we got some things wrong. We got some problems. We don't have any problems in Nacogdoches, let me tell you. We only have opportunities. And we have lots of opportunities here in Nacogdoches. Brother Nick gave us a message the other night. Said he dreamed or, or read a story. Where is it? 
he, he, he had a, maybe it was a, a story you read, or someone had a dream, and these people were in these holes, and they had all of these problems, and they couldn't get out, and they finally figured out that they've stacked all of their problems on top of each other and climb up on top of them, but they still, still couldn't reach out. But when they got to the top of everything that was bothering them and troubling them, they still had to look up and wait for someone to drop a rope down to them. And when they got out of the hole, they realized there was people all up there that were dropping ropes down in the hole, pulling people out. So if someone around you needs some help, drop a rope down into them and pull them out. Pull them out. Give them a chance. Give them a chance to go on with God. I, wa I want to go on with God. I want to go to heaven with you. I want to spend eternity with you. My doctrine, my manner of life, and my purpose what seek you? What are you looking for? Wherein thou dwellest? Come and see. Come and see. Come and see what God can do for you. We'll never know what God can do till we learn to trust him. I can trust him when things are good, when the weather's good, sun's shining, got a few nickels in my pocket, got four tires that's not flat. I can trust him. Trust him in the good times. Trust him in the bad times. God will make a way. God will make a way. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming and blessing us. Thank you for coming. We, we've, <clears throat> Brother Tubby's going to give us some history tomorrow. But I just want to thank you. We, we have been wanting to do this, this fellowship meeting for some time. It was actually scheduled before Brother and Sister Bud got sick. We were going to do this in 2020. And all of you know the situation, the things that happened. And Sister Bud got sick and, and passed away. And Brother Bud got sick. We thought he'd live forever. Uh, but God had a different plan. And so we, we put all of this on hold and just, just couldn't find the heart to do it. And uh, after a while, after a few years, I talked to Brother Brown. Told him I just felt like we needed to wait a while he said you've waited long enough so here we are here we are so praise God we're, we're just I can't I know I'm repeating myself but we're just so happy you're here I want you to feel at home uh, our ushers are back here if you need anything ask them uh, the restrooms are there to the back men's restroom here on the platform ladies restroom on this side uh, the service schedule will be posted at the end of the service. So we, listen, we've got good things ahead. Something good is going to happen. Amen. You believe that? You believe that? I believe something good's going to happen here. Uh, tonight, tomorrow, tomorrow night, and Saturday, we, we have, have some folks here that's going to help us worship the Lord. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you for coming. God bless you. This is outside of the norm. My place is not up here during a meeting. <clears throat> but I was given a, a song. I feel like the Lord gave me a song. After the Houston meeting, all the way up through the Hearst meeting, there was a common phrase that was being used all through there because this is an individual walk I understand you're saying it's not all about us individually but it's um, the common phrase was Lord fix me we got to work on ourselves so there was a forgive me I'm shaking in my boots but there was a, that line that was said after the Houston meeting and before the Hearst meeting, so what was that, a month, thereabouts, four weeks or so? <clears throat>
just driving along. A tune comes in my head. I go, that doesn't really go to anything. What is that? Then some words started coming along. I said, oh, Lord, I know what this means. And the, the phrase, Lord, fix me, came about. I said, Lord, are you? And then more words. And then watching back over the Houston meeting. And then in the Hearst services, before the Hearst meeting. Just different lines. You can write song after song if you just listen to what's going on in the service. I mean, it's, I mean, it's just straight through body scripture. But all this kind of came about, and I'm like, man, is this really something? I just didn't want it to be a, just a, just a catchphrase. I said, no, I don't know about this. So I showed it to a very, very special friend of mine, and he looked at it, and he says, go back over a service and see if you can get another, because I had one verse and then a chorus. He said, see if you can get another, another verse to that. I think there's more into that. Okay, so... Two days later, probably, another verse comes out of it. And it's uh, the song, it's all about fixing yourself. Yeah. You have to get yourself in line, in tuned. Before the church can, we always say we're waiting on the ministry to be restored, waiting on the church to be restored. Well, guess what? Who's the church? Church is you. Church is made up of all the individuals. So we are working on this. So, again, this is out of my norm. I, I apologize for the, for the nervousness. Brother Dave, you get blamed for a line or two of this. Because you said something at one point that said, you feel like we're missing something. Yeah, that's all. <clears throat> so again, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for nervousness and everything else. So I'm going to try and sing this. Fix me. I'm the one standing in need. Can you use the good things, purge away the bad things, and set me free? Place both hands deep inside. Brainwash this tarnished mind. Work out your will by starving out mine and renew that fire in me. Lord, would you please fix me? I'm the one standing in need. good things, purge away the bad things, and set me free. Place both hands deep inside. Brainwash this tarnished mind. Work out your will by starving out mine. heard the message you showed me all along it's me I am the problem I pray that you will fix me it's not my intent to do wrong but I've not been a good listener or a doer of your word use your ministry 
history to save my life. Your word says fire cleanses, so Jesus, have your way. Lord, I give you complete control. Lord, please fix me. I'm the one standing in need. the good things, good things and set me free oh, place both hands deep inside brainwash this tarnished mind work out your will by starving out something missing I'm not hearing you like I should help me to tune in to your voice the veil should be thinner but it's me keeping you from being close I feel the pressure squeezing it's getting greater and it may hurt I need to stay right here as long as it takes. You're working to form me and shape me like you need. Let me learn how to fit in your plan. Lord, would you please fix me? I'm the one standing in need. away the bad things and set me free oh place both hands deep inside brainwash this tarnished mind work out your will by starving out mine and renew you please fix me? I'm the one standing in need. Can you use the good things, purge away the bad things, and set me free? Place both hands deep inside. Brainwash this tarnished mind. Work out your will by starving out mine and renew that fire in me. Lord, I humbly come before you. I finally heard the message you showed me all along. It's me. I am the problem. I pray that you will fix me. It's not my intent to do wrong. But I've not been a good listener or a doer of your word. Use your ministry to save my life. says fire cleanses so Jesus have your way Lord I give you complete control Lord would you please fix me I'm the one standing in need can you use the good things purge away the bad things and set me free place both hands deep inside brainwash this tarnished mind work out your will by starting
starving out mine and renew that fire in me. Lord, please fix me. I'm the one standing in need. Can you use the good things, purge away the bad things, and set me free? both hands deep inside brainwash this tarnished mind work out your will by starving out mine and renew that fire in me I feel there's something missing I'm not hearing you like I should. Help me to tune in to your voice. The veil should be thinner, but it's me keeping you from being closed. I feel the pressure squeezing. It's getting greater and it may hurt. I want to stay right here as long as it takes. shape me like you need let me learn how to fit in your plan Lord would you please fix me I'm the one standing in need can you use the good things purge away the bad things and set me free Oh, place both hands deep inside. Brainwash this tarnished mind. Work out your will by starving out. standing in need Can you use the good things Purge away the bad things And set me free Place both hands deep inside Brainwash this tarnished mind church um, but that song was wonderful and it meant a lot to me because a while back I was doing everything wrong and I, everything I would do it turned out wrong and I thought God please fix me and I said that so that song was pop, very very real I mean you, we, some of us have to get fixed and some of us are already fixed so I want to continue getting fixed until I'm almost perfect and I thank God for being here tonight. I haven't traveled out of uh, town for a long time. It's been a long time since I went anywhere, but I'm so happy to be here tonight. Yes.
together with the family of God. Brother White, Brother Tubby, good to be here with y'all. and Certainly missing Brother Bud and many of the saints that have gone before, looking at that wall coming in. But oh, there's some precious, precious memories there. And glad to be here. I don't, didn't come to really say anything, but what was being talked about, I just kept feeling that unction. God fixed me. And I would agree I'm in that line of people that need to be fixed. <laughs> but I'm thankful that we do have a Savior that is up for the task. And appreciated what was said in the Hearst meeting the theme of that meeting, appreciate Brother Bragg, you leaving that open the way you did. Went home and preached on it and found out we was in the channel. God anointed it every time. We started hitting the points of that meeting and just blessed and God worked. and God working on the relationships and God working on us. and You know, it's really one of the scarier prayers you'll ever pray is when you really, really say, God, fix me. And I know that's what God's been working a whole lot with me on. It's the only reason I'm here. Not, not that I'm worthy to be here, but it is a burning in my heart. And in fact, there in Acts uh, chapter 15, the elders had gathered there. We know that. We've looked at that chapter many times. And they required the Gentiles to remain clean of three things and it was a thing strangled of blood and fornication and you know we've talked a lot about fornication naturally and spiritually we've talked a lot about blood and what it means naturally spiritually but we never talked a whole lot about things strangled and the Lord just burned that in my heart uh, lately as a minister that he said, son, none of my sacrifices are for things strangled. It's an abomination to have a sacrifice by something strangled. He said, if you're going to work in my kingdom, you're going to have to have a sharp knife and cut the throats of my people. You cannot strangle them or they'll become abominable to me. I pray, and Lord, help me to stay in this word. Help me to use this word. And let it be sharp to cut the lives of, of your people as I'm laboring. And, I, and again, I realize I'm laboring with the high priest. I'm longing to be in that order of Melchizedek. And realizing, even as we look back into the law, how that God told the Kohathites uh, that lest they would fall dead, uh, it, when they went to move that tabernacle, they had to work directly with Aaron and his sons when they went into the holy place and had to wait for them to perform their duties because they were the ones that carried all that holy furniture. And I thought, Lord, <laughs> if I work in a holy place and I'm not working closely with the high priest, I'm in trouble. I believe we're in a holy place tonight, and I want to work well with the high priest. I want to, I want to be ever close to him and ever near to him. And I know God here a while back is really about the time of COVID. We was going through all that, lost Brother Bud, and, and just a whole lot of things going on in the church and in the world. And God, I don't, you know, I thought, Lord, I think I have a little bit of an idea what's coming to the world, but I don't know what to do today. <laughs> I don't know what to do right now. And I felt like the Lord really compelled me to prayer. And I've prayed before in my life, but uh, God called me to a level that I had never really been to before. And it was, it's a journey, but when you get into God fix me, I really began to hit some intimate places with God that I'd never been before. And my relationship began to grow, but in all of that, you know, God began to show me. He said, why do I save by faith? Why is the whole realm of salvation in the realm of faith? If, if the outer courts or the gate is the gate of faith, 
the holy place, the holy of holies, everything sets within the realm of faith. And for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves. Uh, we have the righteousness of faith. Uh, that's, that's how we obtain righteousness. And the Lord just asked me, he said, well, why, uh, why do I require faith? And I thought, I, I, I don't know. And he said, it forces the relationship. If you walk in faith, you have to have a relationship with me. And that's where your justification is. This is why the just shall live by faith. Because if God's going to fix you, you're going to have to have a relationship with him. And, and so as I began to pray, the first thing God did was he brought me into a place of, uh, of euphoria and acceptance and I'm feeling good and hallelujah here I am and I'm on the mountain and, and that went on for a while but after a while God pulled out the Holy Ghost mirror maybe he brought me to the labor however you want to look at it and it, that wasn't pretty <laughs> I'll just be honest with you it wasn't pretty and in fact as, as I kept praying and, and kept laboring daily in, in, in continued prayer and lengthy prayer, I, you know, I, I finally would just crawl back into prayer meetings saying, God, I don't deserve to be here. <laughs> I, I just want to be saved. I want to be real. I, I don't want to say one thing and do another. I'm telling you, God's got a mirror that he can put on you. That with it. In fact, the Lord told me, he said, I had to strengthen you to bring you to where I could show you yourself. Well, yeah, you did. And the strength that he gave me was he allowed me to see how much he really did love me. That was the strength that I needed. Because if I didn't believe he loved me that much, I couldn't have endured it. I could not have made it. That Holy Ghost mirror began to really turn on, and, and I'm praying, God, you know, I, I just want to be saved. I just want to be real. And beloved, I'm telling you, I had some wonderful times in there in those, in, and still having them in prayer meeting. Uh, and, and, and I'd look at some of that and say, God, you're still talking to me. And at times I'd say, Lord, I'm unworthy. I'm unworthy. But finally I'd say, Lord, I, I, I just want to be saved. And, and, and as Brother Josh was talking about this, I was identifying with that desire. Uh, and here I am a minister here I've been filled with the Holy Ghost all these years and what is this I'm just being real tonight y'all <laughs> pray for me <laughs> but I do believe God is seeking a deep relationship with us and I'm saying Lord I don't want to hide from my own flesh I, I want to be right inside and out there's something inside of me that's telling me I can, and I, and I go on and, and just begin to say, Lord, just save me. Again, a few months ago, I thought I was doing all right, but I'm telling you, God has a mirror and a way to talk to you to cause you to realize uh, that there's some opportunities, brother, <laughs> uh, brother White, uh, for, for improvement. Didn't even realize they was there. But I'm telling you this, I did. Uh, I know emphatically he loved me. I know emphatically he loves me. I know emphatically he wants me to make it. And, and the thing that I've seen in all of this is it's helping me to love others more. It's helping me uh, to see uh, uh, people in a better light. You know, we're going to have to work with a lot of people. I don't think the call of come out of her, my people's really went on yet. I don't believe we've seen the full force of that yet. I, I, I'm a witness. It, it, it's happening. Uh, my family was called out of Babylon, came around in 73 and 75, and uh, 1980, we finally got our eyes open and barely made that, and <laughs> the righteous were scarcely saved, we can say that, uh, and, and been around a little bit, so we know that call, but I believe it's going to come in a greater way. I believe greater things are in store, and, and God just working on us, and I know working on me to help uh, look at others, to, to really be able to, to, to say, you can do this. We can do this. He does love us this much. He is uh, wanting us to come close. He wants that intimacy. That, I begin to realize that, Lord, you're just cleaning on me. And that's one thing he began to tell me. He said, son, if you're going to come closer, I'm going to have to clean you up a little bit. I'm going to have to work on you. Oh, I'm telling you, I've hit some high places. 
uh, in, in, in some of these prayer meetings that, that I've had with the Lord and, and, and just revelation and God speaking to me and wonderful. Uh, and and I, I know I'm not where he wants me yet, but on the same hand, there is a reality that he's dealing with me on. And, and but beloved, it's by faith. It's by faith. We got to realize that that relationship is what he is seeking. And you, and you left that out, and maybe just left on the table for some of us. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, my manner of life, my purpose, and my faith, and my long suffering and my charity. Just finishing that verse out, because uh, and this is you know as we look at these scriptures and what Paul said, we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Righteousness is not by the Spirit; it's by faith. But we through the Spirit wait for that hope. And Paul went on to say in there, he said, For circumcision availeth nothing nor uncircumcision. A lot of times we can get caught up in technicalities that God's not worried about at all. I thought, oh, God, help me. But he said, But faith which worketh by love. That's what it's all about. And you know, as we begin to love God and and that's really the purpose of the relationship that God, I believe, is seeking somebody to love him. That's why he gave us a free will to know true love. And God's seeking somebody to really love him and love that relationship and desire that. You know, the Lord's asked me at times, he said, you think you're going to be my bride and you can't even talk five minutes with me? <laughs> you know, I remember my wife and I, when we were courting, you know, an hour conversation was nothing. It was short. Um, two or three, maybe four hours of conversation. Of course, we was a uh, typical body relationship, a little bit uh, distanced. And uh, I thought, Lord, I want to be able to commune with you. I want to love you. And that's really where that faith, as I've realized how much he's loved me and I'm loving him back. And I believe that's why John chapter 1 said, and all we have received of his goodness and grace for grace. God gives us his grace. God pours grace into us. And then just like the gentleman, he waits for the response of the lady. And that gentleman can't go any further until she responds and, and begins to return her grace. And now we access the grace of God by faith. Romans 5 and 2, uh, it says there that we access, the, that through faith we access the grace of God. And as we believe God, it opens God opportunities and doors to work more in our lives and to work deeper in our lives. And, 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 and Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for by grace are you saved through faith. Again, it's through faith that God pours his grace into you. And that's the arena that love works in. And as God pours his love into us, he's looking for that response from us. Do you love me? Uh, are you looking to me? Are you believing in me, trusting in me? And I'm here to say tonight, I know that God is looking for a deeper relationship with every one of us. Beloved, it's about the relationship more than anything. It's about knowing him. That's why Paul said that I might know him in the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death. We can have all kinds of deaths. We can do it all kinds of ways, but he's looking for somebody that wants to do it his way. How are we going to know his way if we don't know who he is, if we don't know his desire? But that's part of, that's part of being justified by faith is, is when you go in before God in prayer, and sometimes it is up here, sometimes it is in a closet. And let me say this about prayer, if I may. In Matthew chapter 6, a lot of times we can be lazy in our prayer life and not really spend quality time with God. So I pray with God when I'm walking down the street, when I go to Walmart, when I'm driving here and there, and you should. But Jesus said, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door. And again, it might be your car door, wherever it is that you can find intimacy with God. But it's there that you begin to work it out. And there in that realm of love. See, so it's hard to open up to somebody if you don't know they love you. If you don't know that they're looking out for your best interest and you can really open up and share, I'm telling you, there's times that we get like Adam and Eve in the garden when we hear God come and we want to run and hide from him. And God finally had to tell me, son, quit hiding from me. I knew you when I called you. 
In fact, I reminded him, Lord, you first chose me. I didn't choose you. <laughs> I did choose to respond, but you first chose me. And I'm talking about rubber on the road, a real relationship with Christ here. Talking about taking some steps that at the times make us nervous. But beloved, he knows our thoughts are far off. He knows who we are. If he pulls that mirror out and shows you, he knew long before you ever seen that mirror where you were at. And we can trust him. We can believe in him that he that hath begun the good work in us will be faithful to perform that very work that he hath begun. We don't have to hide from him. We can go to him in full assurance of faith. And that's uh, the beauty here today, and I believe the high call is still among us. I believe the call of the bride rests right here. I believe there is an address on what God is doing. I, I believe it's still among us, but, but I know at least personally, and I'll say this, if none, none of this fits you all, you know how better to pray for me. <laughs> but when God really pulls that mirror around and begins to show you some things, and, and what he does See, part of what he does is he magnifies it. We sing the song, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let's put God big. Let's make God big. God will take those little bitty faults that you didn't think mattered, that you thought there's nothing. Now that's, that's really nothing. And God begin to put that magnifier on that and say, I want you to see it the way I see it. Oh, God. Oh, God. And the number one thing that God will do with you on is unbelief. That is the sin that doth so easily beset us. When, when Jesus said, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment, and of sin because they believe not on me. Unbelief. You ought to believe, Lord Jesus, you can do this. You are doing this. And you're going to do it in me. You're going to make a way when there would seem to be no way. You love me enough to show me who I am because you have the power to keep changing me and make me who you want me to be. And not only me, but you can do this for anybody. Anybody, Lord. We just need you, Lord, to stand up greater. Uh, we're looking, I believe, at being put in the spotlight of the world. Uh, we still preach that, don't we? Someday we're going to be, but we've got to believe that he's great enough and I, I think that comes as an experiential belief. I don't think that's there uh, as a belief that, that's, that's just haphazard. But, beloved, knowing him, knowing him, knowing him. Uh, in that, that's why Jesus said, many will come to me in that day saying, Lord, Lord. Skipping on down, he said, I'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. God, I want to know you. And that really knowing God is letting this word of God work down in our secret places and having enough love and enough trust in him to let him go there and work on all of that, even though we know that I'm the pastor, we know, or, or the preacher, or the, the seasoned saint. I'm the one that, that's supposed to be the example. I'm the one that's supposed to have it all together. And Lord, you're undoing me. But Lord, where else can, can I go? Who else can I call to? And Lord, if you're seeing this, someday I'm going to stand in that sevenfold light, Lord, and I like to stand there. Isn't that what, I like what Jude said? Now unto him that is able to present us before the throne of his glory without fault. And I like the next phrase that comes with it. Because you can get there without, you can think you're without fault, but if you don't have that next phrase following it, you're not making it. And with exceeding joy. But I'm telling you when he gets it right. <laughs> Hallelujah, that joy that comes, that joy that's here, and that's what I'm finding out. I, I've noticed this about myself. I, I, I haven't necessarily prayed for this, but I'm, I'm, I'm loving people more than I ever have, feeling more compassion, and I thought, Lord, I haven't necessarily prayed for it. And he said, if you just get closer and closer, you're just going to be more and more like me all the time. I said, okay. <laughs> thank you, Lord. And, and I thank God that he's drawing us, pulling us uh, into these places. So, yes, work on me. But I like to declare tonight in Nacogdoches, Texas, when you ask him to fix me, he will do it and you can trust him to get the job done and when he gets done there's going to be exceeding joy you're going to have joy unspeakable praise God praise his holy name you can trust him he will do it and you'll be glad about it when he's done with it 
Hallelujah. He'll do it unto perfection without fault before his throne. I'm glad to be here tonight and in this meeting working in this brotherhood. Praise God. God bless your hearts tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, search me, Lord, oh, search me, Lord, shine your light from heaven on my soul, oh, and if you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out, oh, Lord, and straighten me, I want to be right, I want to be saved, and I want to be whole, oh, search me, Lord, oh, search me, Lord. Oh, yes, and turn your light from heaven on my soul. Oh, and if you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out, oh, Lord. Straighten me. I want to live right. want to be saved, and I want to be whole. Oh, search me, Lord. Oh, search me, Lord. Oh, and shine your light from heaven on my soul. Oh, if you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out, oh Lord, and strengthen me. Cause I wanna live right, wanna be saved, and I wanna be whole. Oh, search me, Lord. Oh, search me, Lord. Oh, yes, and shine your light from heaven on my soul. Oh, and if you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out, oh Lord. Straighten me, cause I wanna live right. Wanna be saved and I wanna be whole. Oh, yes, and search me, Lord. Oh, search me, Lord. Oh, yes, and shine your light from heaven on my soul. Oh, and if you find anything that should not be taken out of the Lord, straighten me, cause I wanna live right. Wanna be saved and I wanna be whole. Search me, Lord. Oh, search me, Lord. Oh, yes, and shine your light from heaven on my soul. If you find anything that should not be, take it out, oh Lord. Straighten me, cause I wanna live right. I wanna be saved and I wanna be whole. Oh, search me, Lord. Oh, search me, Lord. Shine your light from heaven on my soul. On my soul. And if you find anything that should not be, take it out of love. Strengthen me, cause I wanna live a right. I wanna be saved and I wanna be old. Oh, search me, Lord. Oh, search me, Lord. Oh, yes, and shine your light from heaven on my soul. Be taken out, oh Lord. Straighten me, cause I wanna be right. I wanna be saved. I wanna be whole. Oh, yes, and search me, Lord. Oh, search me, Lord. Oh, shine your light from heaven on my soul. Hallelujah. If you find anything that should not be taken out, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Right, I want to be saved, I want to be whole. Oh, search me, Lord. Oh, search me, Lord. Oh, yes, and shine your light from heaven on my soul. If you find anything that should not be, take it out, oh, Lord, and strengthen me. Because I want to live a right, I want to be saved, and I want to be whole. Oh, search me, Lord. Oh, search me, Lord. Oh, shine your light from heaven on my soul. If you find anything that should not be, take it out and strengthen me. I want to live right. I want to be saved and I want to be whole. Hallelujah. Oh, search me, Lord. Oh, search me, Lord. Oh, yes, shine your light from heaven on my soul. Find anything that should not be, take it out, oh Lord, and strengthen me, cause I wanna live right, I wanna be saved, and I wanna be whole. Oh, search me, oh, search me, oh, shine your light 
from heaven on my soul. Oh, heaven, if you find anything that should not be, take it out of the Lord and strengthen me. Cause I want to live right. I want to be saved. I want to be Lord. Oh, Lord, and search me, Lord. Oh, search me, Lord. Shine your light from heaven on my soul. If you find anything that should not be, take it out, oh Lord, and strengthen me. Cause I wanna live right, I wanna be saved, and I wanna be old. Oh, search me, Lord. Oh, search me, Lord. Oh, shine your light from heaven on my soul. If you find anything that should not be take it out, oh Lord, and strengthen me. I wanna live right, I wanna be saved, I wanna be old. Oh, search me, Lord. Oh, search me, Lord. Shine the light from heaven on my soul. If you find anything that should not be, take it out, oh Lord. Straighten me, cause I wanna live right, wanna be saved, and I wanna be whole. Oh, yes, and search me, Lord. Oh, search me, Lord. Oh, yes, shine your light from heaven on my soul. Oh, and if you find anything that should not be, take it out, oh Lord, and straighten me, cause I wanna live right, wanna be saved, and I wanna be whole. Oh, search, search me, Lord. Lord. Oh, search, search me, Lord. Lord. Oh, search me, Lord. Shine light from heaven on my soul. If you find anything that should not oh, be, take it out, oh Lord. Straighten me, cause I want to live right. Want to be saved and I want to be whole. Oh, search me, Lord. Oh, search me, Lord. Oh, search me, Lord. Shine your light from heaven on my soul. Oh, and if you find anything that should not be, take it out and strengthen me. I want to be saved and I want to be whole. Oh, search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. Oh, search me, Lord. Shine your light from heaven on my soul. If you find anything that should not be, take it out. Get out and straighten me Cause I wanna live a right Wanna be saved and I wanna be whole Oh, search me, Lord Oh, search me, Lord Oh, yes, and shine the light from heaven on my soul If you find anything that you should not be Take it out and straighten me Cause I wanna live a right I wanna be saved and I wanna be whole Oh, search me, Lord. Oh, search me, Lord. Oh, shine the light from heaven on my soul. If you find anything that should not be, take it out and strengthen me. I want to be right. I want to be saved and I want to be whole. Oh, Lord, you know my thoughts. You know my every deed. You know my every want, and you know just what I need. Oh, but if it's something there, oh, that I'm not aware, Lord, tell me, show me, and help me to be right. Oh, and search me, Lord. Oh, search me, Lord. Oh, shine your light from heaven on my soul. Anything that shouldn't be, take it out and strengthen me. I want to live right, I want to be saved, and I want to be whole. Lord, I try to pray and serve thee every day. Keep me ever meek and humble on my way. And if this sacrifice don't satisfy the price, then tell me, show me, and help me to be right. Oh, and search me, Lord. Oh, search me, Lord. Shine your light from heaven on my soul. If you find anything that should not be, take it out and straighten me. 
Cause I wanna live right I wanna be saved and I wanna be whole Oh yes and search me Lord Oh search me Lord Oh shine light from heaven on my soul Oh and if you find anything that shouldn't be Take it out and straighten me Cause I wanna live right I wanna be saved and I wanna be whole Oh, search me, Lord. Oh, search me, Lord. Oh, yes, and shine your light from heaven on my soul. If you find anything that should not be, take it out and strengthen me. Because I want to live right, I want to be saved, and I want to be old. But uh, I had something happen to me the other day, and I'm going to tell off on myself. Something I have trouble with. We all have one in our pocket, in our purse. We can't live without it because it's the only thing we have in our house that we can call people in an emergency. But I felt like off and on the Lord had dealt with me from spending too much time on my phone. You know, just you look and you look down, and the next thing you know, it's an hour. And that, that hour is lost. You can't get it back. So the other morning, I woke up and the day was going great and uh, I looked down at my phone and it was off. Philip worked with it, my husband, couldn't get it back on. And I told him, I said, I wasn't upset. I've had that happen before and I was upset. I'd cry, you know, this is horrible. Throw a fit, you know, why is my phone broke? I can't get a hold of anybody. But I didn't, I didn't feel that this time. It was just like a peace that I had. I was like, I was okay. And I told my mom later, I said, you know, I think the Lord is trying to teach me a lesson that maybe it's not just my phone, maybe it's a book, maybe it's something besides the Bible, but I need to give more time to God, and I don't want to forget that lesson. I want to give Him my all. I've been here all my life, and I don't want to let things make me miss out now and I just wanted to say thank you Lord I'm nobody but I feel like he took something and said hey I'm trying to get your attention you don't have to have these things but you gotta have me or we won't make it I won't make it without him and I'm so thankful that he loves me enough and I just want to be willing to listen I know he's probably tried before and I just it's nothing. It's not a big deal. But I want to listen to him. And I'm so thankful that he loves me enough to try to get my attention. Thankfully, he won't have to do something worse than that to get my attention. I'll listen to the still, small voice, the little thing. And I'm just so thankful to be here. I'm so thankful for what I feel. feel compelled to give this testimony I see they're testifying so I don't want to be out of order but I want to give a quick testimony years ago my mom's deceased and 
She says she had a vacuum cleaner and she took it to the vacuum cleaner man and she said, listen, I want you to change the brushes in my vacuum cleaner because it's not picking up the way I want it to. So he changed the brushes and uh, she got the vacuum cleaner back and she said, this thing's still not picking up the way I want it to. So she took it back and she says, you know what, it's still not working. I want you to change the belts out the vacuum cleaner so because I'm not satisfied with the way it's picking up. So the vacuum cleaner guy did just what she said, changed the belts and she took the vacuum cleaner back and it still wasn't picking up. She took it back the third time and told him to do something else. And after the third time, she was pretty upset. She said, listen, I have brought this vacuum cleaner to your shop three times and I've told you what to do. You change the brushes, you change the belts and whatever else, and it's still not working. Now what's going on with my vacuum cleaner because I'm wasting time and money. And the gentleman was real calm, my mother said, and she said, ma'am, the first time you brought this in, you told me what to do. So I changed the brushes. The second time you told me what to do, I changed the belts. And the third time, whatever it was, he said, but I'm the repairman, I'm the fixer. I know what to do with this vacuum cleaner. And if you had told me to fix it, I would have fixed it and you wouldn't have had any problems with it. That's a lesson that she taught me years ago. So Lord, fix me. I don't even know what I'm doing right now, but the Lord is still with me. And I want to tell y'all what happened to me. I think it was last Saturday night. I woke up that day. I was really, really heavy. I had been carrying some things for a long time, and it was just like the enemy was just trying to attack me all day long. I got to church that night. It was still feeling pretty heavy, and Brother Isaac visited with us, and he was giving us a good message. And I went to the nursery, and I was telling my mother-in-law, I don't know what's wrong with me. I just feel so heavy. And about that time in that service, uh, the spirit started coming in real strong, and Brother Duff was running, I think, and I said, you know what, I feel that. And she said, well, why don't you go ahead and take a lap around the church? And I said, if that's what it takes for the Lord to fix me, then I'm willing to do it. And when I left that nursery and I hit those double doors and I took that lap around the church, I felt something fall off of me. And I still feel it falling off of me today. So if he can do it for me, then he can do it for you. A lot of people don't know me, but uh, I originated from Walla Walla, Washington. And according to Brother Gary Jackson, which is my minister right now in uh, Albuquerque, he tells me that I have been here in the body of Christ for 40 years, which I can't keep count of numbers. <laughs> but I thank the Lord that I've, I've not given up all that time, you know. And like I, I would always say, you know, this is the purpose why I'm here, because Brother Joe Decino brought me to a meeting in uh, uh, Houston. In Houston, and Brother Patton was a pastor at that time, and I, I got to meet the body then, and I, I, I couldn't believe the love that was around me, you know? And, 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 and first of all, that's what I was looking for, love, but I was looking all in the wrong places, you know? And, and I didn't realize what kind of love I was looking for, but I was trying to find something because I had a void in my heart. And for so many years, ever since I, I moved to Walla Walla, I mean, to, from Walla Walla to here in Albuquerque, I have never wanted to leave again. And, and I just thank the Lord for what he took me out of to be here, and I would never change the program. And then, you know, I get happy sometimes, and, and I realize, you know, what the Lord has done for me, and I'm still here, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the vision you gave me, you know, that song, and, and, and the, these songs have truth in them, you know. It's not just something to comfort you. This is the truth life that we have to go for. And I just thank the Lord that since I found my place in the body of Christ, I don't want to trade it for nothing, nothing. 
you know. And I was married at that time. I had five children. My husband left me. But you know what? I'm still here. Thank you, Lord, because he's the one that meets my needs. And I do. I, I, I'm, I, I do lose sight of my vision through my trial because I, I, I just don't understand why did it happen this way. But through all the trials and tribulations that I've been through, I'm still here. And he's given me the strength to fight the battle that he has put before me. And I have gone through so many different things, but I've never been all alone, you know. And, and these songs minister because they are truth. There's truth in these songs that the Lord has blessed us with. You know, and, and that's the comfort that I look for. And, and, and that's my true love right there. Okay? And, and, and when I started living with my daughter and her husband, they take me to the meetings. But you know what? I'm still here. Thank you, Lord. You know, and through every trial and each test, I'm needing them all to make me worthy of his love to me. And I love the Lord, and I appreciate him for all things that he has been with me through. And I had originated with Brother Williams in uh, Albuquerque, and I came with the Sino to that meeting, and we went to Houston. But the thing about it is, is when we got on that freeway and we were leaving, I was telling uh, somebody on the bus, I said, you know what, I'm coming back here. I left something here. I'm going to come back. And I found the true love of God through that, you know. And you can go through religion, but you're not comfortable because that's not where the Lord wants you. But since I've been in the body of Christ, I'm still here. Thank you, Lord. And it hasn't been easy, but through every trial and each test, he's brought me through. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for letting me be here. It was a long journey for me to get here. I came here from California. It took me going to jail to get here. I went to jail. I met my wife. She brought me to the body. I've been here ever since. I just want to say thank you, Lord. I knew nothing about the body. I knew nothing about talking to the Lord and asking for what I needed. The other day, I went to Home Depot to rent a trailer. I couldn't find my driver's license. I'm going crazy. I'm saying, Lord, please help me find my driver's license. I knew I wanted to come to this meeting, so I needed my driver's license. I don't know why I looked on the, on the copy machine. That's where it was. But since I came to the body, I've learned to stop and talk to the Lord when I have an issue. Instead of trying to work it out myself, I just say, Lord, help me. Help me, Father, help me. I need you right now. I'm in trouble. I need you. Father, thank you. I just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise your holy name. I'm very grateful to God that I was able to attend this meeting. I'm here to return gratitude to him for his loving kindness and for his direction in my life. I want to testify that it has been a blessing of a great magnitude to, to be able to discover what the fellowship in the body of Christ is. When you hear about 
religion, and Babylon, I think I'm the one with the freshest memory so far because I know where I've been a few months back. And compared to where I am today, I just wish like I could pull each and everyone who is on the other side to cross over and be able to enjoy this kind of fellowship that I have discovered and also be happy and have a true hope in life. Praise the Lord. I, I really wanted to be here because of the testimonies that brethren are giving. Actually, we know how to read the Bible. We know how to pray. We know all these religious jargons. But what feeds us most at this point in life is the testimonies. When I hear what brothers and sisters God has been doing in your lives, it builds me up and I really feel I'm in the right place at the right time. So I just want to return glory to God. And the Bible says in Psalms 107, verse 2, that let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And I'm here to hear the redeemed of the Lord say so. Because that is how I can build my faith. My faith is very young and very fresh, and I want to put in everything right so that I can grow in the true knowledge of the word of God. And I want to thank God for leading my steps because the Bible says the steps of the righteous are led of the Lord and his word is a lamp unto my feet and he has directed my path up to here today. And this is the kind of glory that I would like to return unto the Lord and exalt him tonight because he has done for me what no man could do for me. He has been faithful in my life. He picked me at the point when I was giving up. I had given up. But he used a brother just like you and me to redeem my life. And I'm forever grateful that God could still seek me and bring me back when I had given up on him. Sometimes we may give up even on ourselves, but God will never give up on us. There are times when we fail even to be faithful, but God has never failed to be faithful to us. His promises are yes and amen, and he's ready to do for us over and above what we can even think or imagine. Because I never imagined that I could be in such a meeting one time in my life, testifying of the goodness of the Lord, especially remembering the freshness of the salvation that I have received by joining in the body of Christ. I thank God for this fellowship. And as they say, the Bible says in uh, Revelation 12, 11, that they defeated him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And I'm here to hear the testimonies because I want to build myself up more and more and more. And I was t telling brethren in, in, in Taylor that I, I will just want to soak myself into the testimonies of brothers and sisters. I want to grow because I have discovered something precious. And, uh, and uh, I'm not ashamed to say this, that where I came from, it was not only me. There are many who are where I was before God sent a messenger to pull me out from Babylon and bring me and set me in the center of the body of Christ. So I, I, I just want to pose this challenge. I know there are many countries in Africa, but I know more about Kenya. 
Praise God. And when I'm speaking, my desire is to see my neighbor, my friend, another pastor, a, a bishop, a, an apostle, whatever title, the lay leaders, anybody that is there struggling to fulfill the, the wants and the needs of religion to be able to step out. But they will not just step, step out. They will need somebody to hold their hands, just like Paul needed somebody to hold his hand and take him where his eyes could now open and come back and start preaching now the gospel and wrote so many books to us. That's why we are testifying today, because we are in the body of Christ. I want to say that I am in the body of Christ to stay. I'm enjoying my joy. I'm very blessed. I have a lot of peace, and my hope is very steadfast now. And um, I love the testimony that brethren have continued to give. And I just want us to see briefly what, what the testimonies can do to our lives. We feed. I feel so strong because I've listened to brothers and sisters talking about the body of Christ and the fellowship that we have enjoyed so far while I'm here. Well, when I've been here in the USA, and it has been building me up so much. So I want, I want, I want just to share a verse in the book of Kings, or um, Second Samuel, Second Samuel in chapter seven. Verse three says, and there were four leprous men at the entering in the gate. And they said one to another, why sit we here until we die? When you read down, it says, they said, if we go into the city, there is no food. If we go back into the city, there's no food. Let us go forth, forward, and enter into the enemy's camp if they kill us, we will die anyway, even if we stay here. They made a decision. And here is an optional position. I am glad that I am here. I'm able to make a decision to move forward into the body of Christ because I know that there's a song that we used to sing when I was young, that if I die, let me die in the army. If I live, let me live in the army. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Those words, I feel them now, just like when I sang the song when I was in Sunday school, that I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier. In the army, I'm a soldier. In the army, I'm a soldier. In the army of the Lord. If I die, let me die. In the army. If I live, let me live. In the army. If I die, let me die. In the army. I'm a soldier. In the army of the Lord. That is how I feel. Like I'm a fresher in this army of the Lord, and I'm willing, and I'm ready, and I just want to say, like these lepers, when they went, and, and, and at last they got their food, and they came back into their, they brought their food to Samaria, you know the story, that when ben the king of Syria, besieged Samaria at some point, and uh, in Samaria, they, they ate the food, it was finished, but they could not get out because the, the meaning of the name ben Haddad is son of thunder. So if you are surrounded by the son of thunder, you cannot get out, you cannot, nothing can come in, nothing can go out of your city, and you, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are seated out there as a leper because you cannot even sit in the city. Then you go out there and get the food, 
and now you go back. Like, when I get back to Kenya, I'll want to testify. These lepers, they said, we are not going to keep quiet. In verse 9, they say, then they said one to another, we do not well. This day is a day of good tidings. My stay here in the U.S. is a time of good tidings. And I thank God for that. And we hold our peace. If we tarry till morning, morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come that we may go and tell the king's household. Praise the Lord. I know that every inch of this world is God's territory. He is our king. Even in Africa, the devil has not even a centimeter of land that belongs to him. That land belongs to God. And my cry and my appeal is that as the soldiers in the kingdom, let us march the whole of this land. As we march within America, let us march in India, let us march in Africa, let us march in Arabia, everywhere there is soil, that soil belongs to our father who is the king. And this is about our father's business, which is the building of the kingdom, and the kingdom will be built by adding more to the body of Christ. I'm just one, I know, but I believe that when I get there, I will speak to one another and one another, but I will still request your reinforcement. I will want you who will want to live and come there and walk there, like when Brother Watson was there, and he found me, God used him. But now, I will want to invite even more. We go there together as a big army and save more. Because I was not only alone, and I've left so many behind. So my is just a testimony that I'm enjoying being here and I'm growing. But at the same time, I still cry for my people. I still cry for my people that we need to reach there in a combined effort and tell them more about this because I've preached for 34 years and I didn't know about this. So how many more are there who have preached 20, 30, even 40 years and they don't know about the body of Christ? Brethren, God bless you for the good work that you are doing. Thank you for blessing my life. And may really God continue to increase you as you have known how to decrease so that God increases. I've seen it practically. I don't need to be told. I've seen humility. I've seen love. I've seen people who really relate with God in truth and spirit. And may God really bless you. I'm happy to be here with you. God bless you. brother and we just all go home <laughs> um but uh i've been here all my life i've been here 40 years i have um, gone to fellowship meetings camp meetings all my life um ministers meetings i know it's nine o'clock i know we've all traveled but i'm telling you the power of god is here tonight i'm telling you the authority of jesus christ is here tonight and he is ready and willing to help anybody that will reach out to him i would like to say um i am so glad to be here i've seen all the work that y'all have done here in nacogdoches thank you for having us thank you for letting us come here and um i'd um just like to share a quick testimony of something that happened to me in the hearse meeting sister bragg we were sitting there back there having the ladies meeting and i was listening to these sisters and um, I don't 
well, obviously, brothers, you've never been in a ladies' meeting. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm telling you what, your wives can really preach. <laughs> and, um, and so they were talking, and we're having these, this ladies' meeting, and they're talking, and there's something came over me that felt very inadequate to be in that, in that building. And I thought, God, I, I'm never going to measure up to these women. And um, Sister Walker said that she's just trying to be like Brother Walker. <laughs> because if she could be like Brother Walker, she could be just like Jesus. <laughs> and, but, um, um, but the Lord, those thoughts were coming over me. And, and um, by the way, I'm Sister Krista Perry from um, Terrell, Texas. So if you don't want to... If I say something wrong, you can tell my brother. <laughs> he's, my pa- he's my pastor. Brother Chad, raise your hand. <laughs> or don't. You don't have to. <laughs> and Tim, thank you. <laughs> but um, anyways, brother, um, not brother, one of the ladies was talking, and and I'm really dealing with this, struggling in my mind. God, I'm not adequate. Brother Parker, like you're talking about that mirror, and God starts showing you things. And you say, God, why did you pick me? Don't you see all of this? Don't you see? Don't you see where I'm lacking after 40 years of being here? Don't you see? Why? Why did you pick me? And um, and I thought about my grandmother, Sister Janet Kennedy. She went to a meeting in Detroit a week before she passed away. And um, she, all the ladies were given their testimony about how um, God called their husbands and this and that. And they were given their experiences. And uh, she came to my mind. Many of you probably remember her. And um, she raised me in church because I sat with her in all the services while my mom played the piano. She would pinch me if I was too loud. She taught me how to work down front. She had taught me how to work in the spirit. And um, and I remember, as a young lady, I remember her going to a meeting, and she came home a different person. I remember, just as a 13-year-old girl, her spirit was lighter. The way she talked was so sweet. I'm telling you, there was a difference in my grandmother. And while I'm sitting there listening to these ladies give their testimony and thinking, I can, I can never be like this. I can never change. And um, you ever hear the, the, you know, the scriptures, the murmuring and the complaining? I know you've all done it because it's in the scripture. <laughs> We've all done it, okay? But, you know, like negative Nancy or whining Wendy. I don't know why they're all women. <laughs> but, you know, there's, maybe there's something to that. <laughs> We're always worrying. We're always what if, what if, you know, um, y'all don't, you know, if that was a qualification to make the bride, so just you know, worry about everything. I'm just your first, you know, contestant. I'm, I'm there. I'm the, you know, I'm right there. Jesus, well done, Krista. <laughs> Worrying, well done. And, um, but anyways, just listening to these ladies' testimonies and thinking about that change in my grandmother sitting there that day, the moment, I know the moment, just pondering these ladies and what they're talking about, and remembering, I was texting my mom during it, during that uh, ladies' meeting, and asking her to tell me the testimony of my grandmother that she was afraid that she was going to die because she had a heart condition that she lived with, and um, and then she was feeling inadequate with the calling of being a pastor's wife. <laughs> And I'm not a pastor's wife. I'm just a child of God, just trying to live up to the word of God. And, um, and, and so listening to that testimony and the ladies and then remembering the change that I knew took place. I knew there was something different about my grandmother. And, um, and I was sitting there. The Lord changed my mind. The Lord touched my mind. He brainwashed me, Brother J- Brother Edens. The Lord washed my mind of all of those negative thoughts, all of those, those um, what?
what ifs or worrying if I'm good enough or worrying and what about all these things you see in me, God, and and just all of that, all of the yuck, all of them, all the all of that. And the Lord changed my mind and said, if I can change her, I can change you. I can fix you, Krista Perry. You don't have to tell me all the bands and the belts and all the brushes that need to be fixed. I know how to fix you. I know how to fix you. If I can put the stars in place, and if heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool, don't you think, Krista Perry, that I can touch your mind and I can help you? Don't you think that if I called you that I'll equip you with the word of God? I'll shod your feet. I will help you. I will touch you. I will fix you. And when you're heavy and when you're down and when you're low, don't you know that I, I am the healer, that I am the one that can touch you and help you just like I helped your grandmother? And do you know she passed, when she came home, she passed away a week later. You know, God knows just when and just how to fix us. You know, we think that it's got to be just this way or just that way. You know, sometimes he doesn't fix any of the circumstances. He doesn't have to change the circumstance. You hear me? My circumstance when I walked out of that ladies' meeting in hers did not change. It was my mind he changed. You know, Jesus' circumstances did not change. He went through some tough stuff. But you know what? He kept his mind stayed on his father. He, what did he equip himself with? The word of God. The word of God. The Lord is my strength and he is my high tower. He is my buckler. He is my shield. He is my sword. He is the one to which my soul cries out. Lord, would you help me? He is the beginning. He is the end. He is the alpha. He is the omega. You know, when I, when I wrote that song, Lord, I'll stop telling you how big my storm is, and I'll tell my storm just how big you are. Do you know what that is? It's a mind shift. It's a mind change that God has the authority to do anything he wants to do. It doesn't have to, the circumstance doesn't have to change, but my mind toward that circumstance can change. The authority of God can follow behind me because I am a child of the most high God. I'm not just in anybody. I'm not just in anybody. The people under my voice, we're not just to anybody. We are the army of God. Hallelujah. An army of God. Change your mindset. Fix it. Let him fix it. It may not change everything, but by God, I tell you, he can brainwash you. This world will brainwash you with all the dirt and all the filth and all the nastiness that it wants to, to fill you with in your mind. But I'm telling you, wash. Wash it with the word. Wash it with the spirit. Wash it. Cleanse it. Get it whole. Make my mind whole. I've been here all my life, and I've heard y'all say, touch your mind. Touch your mind. Pray for yourself. Sister Abby, I saw you on the live stream the other day praying for yourself. The Lord will touch your mind. I promise he did it for me. He did it for me. He changed my mind, and I want him to keep washing it because he ain't done yet. It's a process, but Lord, wash my mind and fix me just how you want me fixed. had grown weary as he journeyed on his way. So he rested at the well side, a comfort in the heat of day. There he waited for a woman, black with sin and bound for hell. 
When she arrived, he plainly told her what you need. Not in the well, he's still waiting by the well, and he's holding out his hand. If you drink this living water, you won't have to thirst again. He's still waiting by the well side, knowing you be passing by. So take advantage of this moment. He's not gone, he's still waiting by the well. Are you tired of being thirsty? Even though you've had your fill of the water that the world gives, does it leave you longing still? Then there's goodness at the well side, a woman's voice reads loud and clear. That this land can her forever, and if you need hope, you can find it here. Oh, he's still waiting by the well, and he's holding out his hand. If you drink this living water, you won't have to thirst again. If you 
going to turn you loose tonight. Hope all of you come back in the morning. We've got the service times on the screen. Breakfast will be at 8.30 to 10.30. Service starts at 11. We'll have service tomorrow morning and band practice at 6 and service starts back tomorrow night. So uh, we hope all of you get a good night's rest. Rest up and come back. Our breakfast starts at 8.30, service at 11. All right, let's, uh, let's just thank the Lord where you are. Thank Him for this service. Thank Him for His mercy. Praise God. Pray for the service tomorrow. Bless the Lord. Thank you. y'all need anything, catch one of the ushers, uh, need a place to stay, see Brother Nick, where's, where's Brother Nick, y'all see Brother Nick, if y'all need a ride or a place to stay, he'll help you, alright, God bless you, good night, we'll see you in the morning.